Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I am bringing you today is called Dusk Path. It's a 5x7. It's a redo, and I redid it, I don't know, a couple months back, July. Uh, now, what I am showing you right now is the original painting from back in like 2015 or so. And actually, if you were to dig around on this channel, you would see this very same video. Probably, well, maybe just a sped up. Who knows? A lot of times back then I was doing like six minute videos or what have you. But um, when I have the original, I think it's cool to show it. So this is being painted on a burnt sienna background with some burnt sienna paint and a lot of oil. And this was my favorite way of working and, and, and drawing for a long time until I made a switch to the uh, the darker burnt umber tone. And recently I made a switch to a lighter burnt umber tone. But to really get that kind of toneless zing, you can't really beat the burnt sienna as a background color. And uh, that's based on a tip I got from old um, Burge Harrison. He wrote a great book, by the way, if you're interested in reading books about painting. Not a single illustration in it, but an amazing book. And it's called Landscape Painting by Burge Harrison. And when people contact me via email wanting to know if there's any books on painting in a toneless way. I always put them onto that book. Um, there are other books on toneless painters, but very few of them cover techniques or even the principles involved in accomplishing that type of painting. This video is being recorded on October 9th, 2019. I'm going to be putting it up and I'm going to be putting it on a delay because at some point I reckon you, you people are going to go what happened? Because <laughs> they're going to go to the channel and they're going to see not many new videos especially after this big rush of uh, live videos I've done and um, after this I'll be uh, compositing together a um, a video after I finish recording this I'll be compositing a video that shows my finish on the recent Corot study I did that was a 6x8 and that's looking really awesome and I sold that painting I wanted to make sure and get the finish done before I went on vacation because well, I don't know if you've ever gone a long trip you know it puts you through some changes so usually good I mean I usually come out pretty inspired with a few you know more than a few usually good bits of reference I can't wait to make paintings of and a lot of times I've seen art in museums and you know it's it's a good thing it's a good to get reset just like I'm always talking about on the uh, live videos where I have to pause the camera and go help a customer or something like that um, it's almost never a bad thing when I come back I see something in that painting I wouldn't have seen if I just sat there working away I so I have a small version of fresh eyes so when I get back uh, you know in five weeks I will have a major set of fresh eyes yeah so that's all good yeah so this painting Dusk Path uh, now this would have been the study for uh, I believe I did it as a uh, in fact I know I did it as an 8x10 because I'm looking behind my computer monitor and I'm looking at the 8x10 that I did and it's a really beautiful painting and actually the study is quite good too um, you'll see that this is a kind of redo where it was more enhancements than extensive surgery and um, well there's a couple different tacks I mean maybe we got we got another 10-15 minutes here not 15 but at least 10 minutes so let's talk about redoing first of all I, I have gone in and redone paintings that were quite recent and if that in that case I don't even consider that a redo I just consider that fixing things in the second pass <laughs> but I've had to couch things in those terms because of doing the live sessions and I know people are like well wait this is like not your usual second pass scenario well if I'm lucky enough to see things that I can fix 
in between my first pass and my second color pass then I'll just jump in and do major surgery. That doesn't happen very often. Sometimes I miss things and a lot of times I'll miss things because I am just uh, frankly copying the photo just like I'm always telling you guys not to do and um, they get you in problems, they get you into these uh, little corners you know where you can't really um, pardon me get a take my shoes off it's definitely warming up here in New Zealand by the way spring is springing and I'm getting ready to go into fall in, in Europe and the US after that so I'm really hoping to get some good change of color hopefully I won't be too late this year last year less than that wasn't last year it was three years ago I went and I was too early and all the trees were still very much hanging on to their green leaves except right as I was just leaving uh, England um, and when I got to California, it was sort of the same scenario. Not a big, big change of color. So, I don't know. I think, hopefully, you know, it won't have nothing but barren trees. If I do, I'll, I'm sure I'll still get a, a few a good bits of reference. But that's my hope. You can say a little prayer for me, too, that might get some great full color painting reference. Because, you know, out here in New Zealand, we, well, at least here in northern New Zealand, I should say, we don't get a big uh, change in the coloration of the leaves here. Most of them are some sort of, some form of pine or evergreen tree. Yeah, so um, talking about, I did this uh, original thing back in 2014, 2015, I think 2015. Really, really happy with the uh, larger version. Pretty happy with the small version. Pardon me. Hope that's about my charger oh sorry about that I'm getting ready to get out of here yeah sorting things out um anyway so like I said I was real pleased with this painting so much so that like I said I have it hanging in my home office here the the larger version and I think I've painted it uh, I painted the scene several times and funny enough if you were to look uh, at the photo reference you would go how did you make a painting out of that <clears throat> it's like a bunch of nothing there's actually like a highway behind these trees for some reason though I've been I've gravitated to this particular composition many many times I've done it with some different types of skies I've done it uh, with the path uh, having been changed into a river I have done it as a square I've done a lot of different things but I have to say <clears throat> this is my favorite version and one of the things I think really really tends to work is sorry about that Anyway, sorry about that. Um, one of the things I really like, I, yeah, since this is scattered, but this bonus video is what it is, because, you know, I'm on vacation right now, so. But uh, I really like the strong contrast between the trees and the sky. I think that really works. And, you know, the fact of the matter is at this time of uh, day that I would have been painting this, you're always going to see, you know, the trees being quite dark against the sky. Even though, you know, as human beings, we can perceive a lot of light in those trees where in the photo you would probably just see, you know, everything is 100% dark. And then, of course, you have, oh, like the new iPhone is making adjustments to nighttime shots and things. And if I could stand Apple products, I would probably be all over that because that would be amazing to uh, capture uh, nighttime scenes and do some... Um, you know nocturnes that would be awesome nocturnes would be a great topic for a discussion because uh, I often think about what happens to and I haven't seen it accurately portrayed with photography but um, you know the colors we see at night it's either the stars lighting things or the moon or a street light right that's fascinating and you know are you really seeing color we tend to paint things interpret things as blue but is it really blue do you think it's blue? Mm. Good question. 
Anyway, sorry for the rambling here, the rambling discourse. Uh, oh, did we just recently break into the... Oh, we just broke into redo phase. So what I've done is I hit it with a glaze. And that would have been a combination of... Um, looking to me like a transparent earth yellow with a little bit of permanent orange. Uh, because it's pretty subtle. And so when I do a light glaze like that, I'm, I'm just looking for some unifying... And one of the things I'm doing like now is kind of restating some of the tree shapes. Um, the contrast was pretty dark. That's the other thing. I really don't like that super strong emphasis on the straight line there. Oh, you actually can see all the things that bothered me, right? I'm fixing them. I put a little bit of trees on the other side in the distance. And I'm kind of mapping things out. But one of my major problems was this kind of wedge that had been created by the straight line of the grass up against those trees. Now, you could see something like that in a photo and you just paint it, and that's probably what I did. I had, it's funny enough, I mean, I, I inserted a ton of creativity and imagination into this painting. It wasn't like I just straight up aped the, um, the photo. But uh, I still ended up carrying things in from the photo that weren't good. And if you, like I just said a little while back, if you've been with me any time at all, you know I harp on this constantly. It's a constant refrain. <clears throat> this is actually one reason why so many of the landscape paintings from the past are better than a lot of modern landscape paintings. And that's because people are painting from photos and they think, well, it worked in a photo, I could just copy it and it's all going to be fine. And you know what, they might even sell that painting. So... You, they could look at me and say, well, you don't know what you're talking about, but I don't care if you're selling your work or, or not. A lot of things that are not very good get sold. Um, I mean, it's great to sell work, and it definitely is a, a strong indicator that you're doing good work if people are buying it. However, if you're making really tight um, paintings from photographs where you haven't fixed or adjusted any of the compositional weirdness in the photograph uh, for your painting. You're making bad paintings. It's just the long and short of it. And um, what happens, I think, with the people that buy these types of uh, paintings is they just get enraptured. They get lost in the detail. But at a subconscious or unconscious level, I believe that there's just a lot less relaxation involved. It's like I've mentioned this time and time again on my channel and in the, in the live videos. You have to design your painting and this was I'm going to give credit where credit's due. This was a um, a concept I got from uh, a, a video channel. Oh gosh, his name. Stapleton Kearns. Thank you. Um, he's a, quite a great painter but he um, was was very prolific in, on Blogger and the back in, this is back in 2009-2010 um, and he basically wrote a blog post every day outlining every little thing, absolutely every single thing he knew about painting. Um, if it wasn't a book it'd be you know 600-700 pages you know it's so dense um, and there's a bit of repetition it, but I highly recommend if you put his name into um, a Google search and you're a landscape painter, you would, I would, wouldn't regret it. What I would highly recommend is that you, uh, you find his blog and then you just go back to when he first started it and read a bit every day coming forward. Because he doesn't, I don't think he keeps it up anymore, but it doesn't matter because he said everything that could be said. He said it multiple times. A lot of cases he gets in, he has videos where he's like fixing up people's paintings in Photoshop and stuff like that. And go bless him, he's a wonderful man. He's a wonderful man. I got a lot of my basic foundational um, ideas about painting, although I paint in a different way with a different approach. Um, he still is one of my mentors and teachers for sure. Anyway, I can say we're getting getting close to the end. Thank you for joining me today. Sorry for the rambling dissertation. It's kind of an old school, old style M. Francis video, so hopefully you enjoyed it. And if the, the rambling's too much for you, just turn me off and put on some tunes and watch the painting happen. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining me. I'll be back real soon with another video. Uh, video. Meanwhile, please take good care of yourself. 
your family. Look after your enemies too. They, they might, you never know, you might turn it around. And stay out of trouble.